Hi, I'm Mike Noonan, and I'd like to discuss with you series rated versus fully rated. First thing we need to understand is that circuit breakers are not series rated or fully rated. It's the equipment that is fully rated or series rated. And as we go through and look at the different definitions and different examples, you'll see how this applies to electrical equipment, such as panel boards, switchboards, and even metering equipment. The easiest way to understand series rated is to first look at what fully rated is. So we want to take a look at an example of fully rated system. When a fully rated system is applied or used, that means that all of the breakers upstream and downstream are all rated for the same fault current. So in, for example, in this case, we have two circuit breakers applied on a 100,000 amp short circuit available fault current, and both of them are rated at 100,000 amp interrupting rating, which means both of them could interrupt the fault by themselves if they had to. It, below it, it shows it can also apply to fuses. It could be two fuses, it could be a fuse protecting downstream circuit breaker. Both of them would be able to interrupt the fault if they had to. So now we get to the term, what is series rating? And series rating, if you try to find definitions, there's a couple places to go look. Uh, one of them would be in the National Electrical Code. And the National Electrical Code really doesn't specifically define a series rated. It talks about when a circuit breaker is used on a circuit having an available fault current that is higher than the marked interrupting rating being connected on the load side of an acceptable overcurrent protected device having a higher rating. Now, what that means is that you have a breaker with a lower interrupting rating downstream connected on the load side of a higher rated breaker, which is upstream. So in our example here, we have a 19,000 amps of available fault current. The breaker immediately downstream from the Incoming power would be a 22,000 amp interrupting rating breaker, and that breaker is ahead of a 10K rated breaker. The series rating means that when these two are properly tested, that the upstream breaker can handle the fault and it will protect or it will uh, limit the current a little bit so that the downstream breaker uh, can handle the fault if it had to. And we'll talk a little bit more about how this actually happens itself. So again, a lower rated breaker downstream from a higher rated breaker, which together uh, they interrupt the fault. The NEMA has a little bit better definition. If you go to the National Electrical Manufacturers Association and look up the series rating, it basically says it is a short circuit interrupting rating that is assigned to a combination of two or more overcurrent protective devices which are connected in series and which the rating of the downstream device in the combination is less than the series rating. Again, this is what we talked about earlier, but the key things about that definition are, number one is it is an interrupting rating. It's not a circuit breaker rating, it's an interrupting rating. Number two, that it involves a combination of two or more devices connected in series and number three, the interrupting rating of the load side or downstream device is less than the interrupting or series rating itself. So to simplify and look at it in layman's terms, we'll take a look at a 22,000 amp fault current available, and it is applied to a 22,000 amp interrupting rating breaker that is upstream from a 10,000 amp interrupting circuit breaker. And the fault being downstream of the 10K, even though the available current is 22K, the series rating means that the 22 and the 10 both survive, both can handle the fault. Usually they both interrupt. Usually they both open at the same time. However, there is enough uh, testing done that shows that should the 10K breaker interrupt first, it will be protected by the upstream breaker and therefore the two together will survive the fault. And the other example at the bottom shows how we have a 100,000 amp fault current applied to a 100,000 amp rated fuse and a 10,000 amp rated circuit breaker. So we can show that a series rating can be circuit breaker and circuit breaker or it can be fuse and circuit breaker. 
And again, that's used in a lot of equipment uh, that Schneider Square D sells. So why do we use series rating? Number one, the biggest reason is cost. When you have to use fully rated, all the breakers have to be capable of interrupting the higher fault current, the cost goes way up. Using series rating, you use lower cost, lower AIC circuit breakers downstream. Another advantage comes from the size of the equipment, and a size savings is not always there, but again, it may be a savings that could be applied to the system because the lower AIC rate, rated breakers may be smaller. Also, uh, you may be able to get by using a smaller frame breaker downstream from the, the upstream breaker on a series rating. Now, UL and National Electrical Code all talk about especially marking the equipment so that a customer or a user down the road goes in and looks at a piece of equipment. They can see on the label that it is a series combination rating rated at, and then it will, you will have the number will be installed there. Again, that marking is put in by the installer, and it would be something like 22,000 slash 10,000, meaning it's a 2210 series rated piece of equipment. Now here's another example that was showing a label on a QO load center and again you could find the available fault current. So for example if it was 22,000 amps of fault current, if the main breaker or the upstream device is a QOM VH or a QO VH installed either in the panel load center or remotely Either way, that, if that is the upstream breaker, then you can use QO and QOT standard 10K interrupting breakers downstream. And the system would be, would be, could be applied on a 22,000 amps of fault current. We use this commonly in panel boards. It is very frequently used where a main breaker, either installed in the panel board or upstream somewhere in a switchboard, for example, or in a circuit breaker enclosure, ahead of the panel board is rated higher than the breakers that are in the panel board. If that is a series rating, then you have a, can apply it at a higher rating than the low downstream breakers are intended to interrupt. Another example we use a lot in the Square D equipment is in metering equipment. And this is what we call a three-tier rating. In a three-tier rating, you have a main in the metering equipment somewhere upstream, so there is probably a single main. You have a tenant main located in each one of the meters for each one of the apartments, and then you have a load center in the apartment. For in this case, we might have, for example, a 65K rated main on 65,000 amps of fault current. The main is a, capable of handling 65K, the tenant would be rated a little bit less, maybe 42K, and then the load center or panel in the actual apartment would be rated 10K. So again, we would have a three-tier 65, 42, 10 series rating. One of the biggest things to understand about series rating is that it doesn't apply to the actual breaker itself. What we as a manufacturer have to do is test the combination so it is the upstream breaker and the downstream breakers in actual equipment. So whether that's an enclosed breaker mounted ahead of a panel board, main lugs panel board, all of the equipment is tested together. If it's two breakers in series, the main breaker upstream, branch breakers in the panel board, they're tested as an assembly. If it's the main breaker installed in the panel board, then we would put the higher rated main, the lower rated tenant breakers, test it, and UL would then, we would be able to list it as a UL listed series rating. Hope this has helped. Thanks for listening.